There's nothing quite like waking up in the morning and feeling fantastic and flying high into your day, only to realize, well, it's Wednesday and it's only the middle of the week, then you come crashing back down to Earth. Welcome back to this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Our first incident to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to Mississippi, where near Jackson, Mississippi this past week, they had some severe storms come rolling through. And this is the scene that happened over on the Ross Barnett Reservoir. The 33,000 acre lake serves as the state's largest drinking water resource, but is also a very popular destination for outdoor recreation such as boating, water skiing, and fishing. And this was the scene this past weekend as these storms rolled through out here on the lake. Here we're going to see these boaters are being battered by waves. You can see the boat here with the wake towers actually already completely submerged underwater and as they move this pontoon you can see the vessel that was behind this pontoon is actually completely submerged underwater as well obviously several boaters had to be rescued during this event due to the damage caused to their boats by the storms that came through witnesses stated that everybody was pulled out of the water and fortunately there were no injuries reported with this event other than the damage to the boats <laughs> Our next incident to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to Tennessee where a terrible tragedy occurred just a few weeks ago when a woman was killed and a man was injured when a houseboat exploded on a Tennessee river. The explosion happened shortly after the 38-foot vessel refueled at the Montgomery County Conservation Club which is located on the Cumberland River. Witnesses stated that the vessel had just finished refueling and pulled off the dock when the explosion occurred. The explosion actually threw the wife into the water and the husband was able to jump into the water on his own after the explosion. Fortunately, two good some Meriden vessels actually witnessed the event happen and were able to jump in and pluck the two boaters from the water. Both boaters were injured during the event and were sent to the local hospital. Unfortunately, the wife later succumbed to her injuries and our thoughts and prayers do go out to the family. Just let this serve as a reminder to the rest of us out there who are boating as we go through the rest of this year. Anytime you refuel a dock, make sure you get proper ventilation, run blowers, anything you gotta do to make sure all fumes are out of the engine compartment. Our next incident to make the boating news this week is going to take us back down to Florida when a shrimp boat crew found themselves in some trouble right off of Fernandina Beach. The shrimp boat hit the North Jetties near Fort Clinch State Park around 9.30 a.m. Unfortunately, it was at high tide, so the rocks were completely submerged and the vessel could not see him at the time. A mayday call was sent out, and fortunately, a local charter captain was in the area and was able to rescue the three crew members of the shrimp boat, which was taking on water before the Coast Guard arrived. Fortunately, due to the charter captain's quick actions, no injuries were reported. The local charter captain was, however, interviewed after the event, and he mentioned that he stops multiple boaters every year from hitting the jetties due to them being poorly marked, and in fact, this is not the first time he's had to rescue somebody off the jetties. Our next incident to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to Atlantic City where a crew went offshore but got a little bit more than they gambled for. Coast Guard officials say they received an alert that a 28-foot vessel with six passengers on board was about 34 miles offshore when it began taking on water due to inclement weather. Once the Coast Guard arrived at the scene, they lifted two boaters to safety while a Good Samaritan vessel assisted in transferring the other four boaters to safety as well. All six wound up making it back to shore without injuries. Crew members from the Coast Guard rescue crew were later quoted saying these men no doubt made the right call deciding to be rescued in what looked like unforgiving seas. And also mentioned that luckily they all had their life jackets which definitely aided in the recovery of these men and probably saved most of their lives. They also wanted to remind boaters that they encourage all boaters, especially if you're going offshore, to have operable radios, e perbs and proper life jackets on board. Our next incident to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to the Gulf of Amman, where the Karg, a lightly armed oiler and cargo ship that is the largest vessel in the Iranian Navy, actually sank a few weeks ago following a fire. The fire erupted on the vessel back on June 2nd. Fire crews actually attempted for hours to try and extinguish the blaze, but unfortunately finally failed and all 400 of the ship's crew and naval cadets ultimately had to evacuate the ship. Hours after the evacuation, the ship sank approximately six miles off the coast of Jask. 33 people on board the vessel were injured. Fortunately though, no lives were lost. This is a big blow to the Iranian Navy though, as this is Iran's largest warship and many of their ships have limited range, so the Navy often relies on this vessel to do longer travel distances. This event did happen a few weeks ago and I was waiting to bring it on to boating news until hopefully we could find out our cause of what happened here. But right now they still have not released a cause but one of the things that is being talked about is possible espionage due to various events that have gone on around Iran over the last several weeks. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. If you ever see anything crazy happening out in your waterways be sure to hit me up on Facebook or Instagram and let me know and you might see your stories over here. Just like Allison Whaley Tweedy, Nick Nolan, Damian Thatcher, and John Berens did this week. And if you haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button. If not, we're coming to steal your drain plug.